Hello, welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the stitchery, I promise. You're on the other side. If you saw any of my vlog videos, I showed you around my basement a little bit and uh, you know that we are facing the stitchery right now. Okay, you don't care about that. You're here to make an adorable amigurumi and I get that. So you're here to make cinder. Well, you think you are. So this is cinder. Cinder is made in a very specific, odd yarn and I'm not 100% done with her exact pattern yet. I'm sorry, but this is not false advertising because you are going to make a cat. I made her a friend. <laughs> this is cobweb. Cobweb is made in worsted weight yarn, a four millimeter hook, and is smaller than cinder. So if you want to make a little amigurumi, then you're in just the right place. Um, if you want to make cinder, you're going to have to wait till I can figure out a similar yarn to what I used to make this. Uh, yeah. So far it's a challenge. <laughs> but if you want to make cobweb, then you're in just the right place. Cobweb is made in the crafter's secret. Yes, Crafter's Secret, big idea in the color Pearl Fleck. This is a Hobby Lobby yarn. And um, she is super cute. So this is the exact same pattern though. I mean, it is, this is the same idea, the same design, um, but she takes fewer rows because she's in a bigger yarn. She's in a five weight, strange yarn and um, I don't have a tutorial for her just yet, but if you want to make cobweb in black and call it cinder, I'm good with that. It's fine. You're basically making the same thing. I mean, look, they both have the wraparound tail. They both have little ears, little face. Both of them have the false French knot as their face. No safety eyes, so perfectly safe for children. And um, tiny little noses. So grab your hooks, grab your yarn, and if you want to make cobweb with me then let's get started okay you guys wanted a tutorial for cinders well unfortunately she is kind of hard to make a tutorial for because she uses a specific kind of yarn and i'm not 100 percent sure if i can use regular velvet yarn to make her yet but i am going to see I'm working on it to see if i can make it in any other kind of yarn because this is a special yarn that I've never worked with anything like it before. So it's like working with a velvet tube. It's very strange. Anyway, you're still going to be able to make a small little black cat for Halloween. No worries. All right. This is a play off of my Pill Pal pet design. This is smaller, not as many increase rounds, and shouldn't take as long to make. I was also trying to make it easy to fit in a Halloween bucket if you so desire. So let's get started. Make a magic ring, pinch with your thumb, make an X, turn your hand, grab this like so. Underneath, grab the top, turn, and there you go. If you need a better tutorial on how to do that, my beginner playlist will be linked down below. Okay, make six single crochet in the ring. Slightly close your ring, make sure you still have a hole, insert your hook into the stitch that's across, make two single crochet in that stitch, also known as an increase. This is the beginning of round two, mark your first stitch, and you can now pull this tight if you want. You have two choices here. You can either work over your tail or sew it in later. I'm going to work over my tail. So I'm going to bring it up like that. Two single crochet in every stitch around. At the end of round two, you will have 12 stitches. Okay, at the end of round two, you should have 12 stitches. Take your stitch marker out, make two single crochet in the first stitch again. Mark that stitch, the first one, 
one single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochet in the next stitch, one in the next, and that is your pattern. Two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one, two, one, two, one. All the way around. You will have 18 stitches at the end of round three. At the end of round three, you will have 18 stitches. Moving on to round four, two single crochet in the next two stitches. That means one and one. Mark the first stitch, increase in the next. Do that again. One, one, two. One, one, two. And repeat all the way around. At the end of round four, you'll have 24 stitches. Now, rounds five through 13, you are just gonna go around and around and around. And here is my trick to remind myself I'm going around. I like to make two stitches to get the row started. And in the first one, I mark on the side instead of on the top. This tells me I'm going around. Marking on the top is my way of telling me I'm either increasing or decreasing. It's just a little hack I have for myself. You're welcome to try it. So you're just going to go around and around from rows, from rounds five through 13, and I will meet you at the end of row 13. Okay, so you should have rounds five through 13, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13, right there. Now we are going to decrease. So I'm going to do the invisible decrease, which is where I go under the first loop, under the second loop, through two, through two. I'm going to remove the stitch marker now and mark that stitch because I'm increasing and decreasing. In the next two stitches will just be a regular single crochet. And we're gonna decrease again. Under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two, regular single crochets. One more time, under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two, regular single crochet, regular single crochet. Now continue that all the way around and you'll have 18 stitches. Okay, we're gonna decrease again and then we'll stuff. Decrease in the first stitch. One single crochet in the next. And that's the pattern. Decrease in the next two. Single crochet in the third. Decrease in the next two. single crochet in the third. That's your pattern. Okay, you should have 12 stitches all the way around. I'm going to pause and stuff. Okay, you should have a pill shape, hence the name, Pill Pal Pet. And we're going to decrease in every stitch around so that we have six stitches at the very end. So nothing's different. We're just gonna decrease in all the stitches now. One. two, and 
and six. Okay, we are making the cat. So do not fasten off because we're going to continue to make the, the tail. After a regular pill pal pet, we would fasten off here, but we're making the cat, so we have to make the tail. We're going to remove our stitch marker, make a single crochet in the first stitch here, and then I'm going to mark that stitch. There we go, okay. And going to make a stitch in the next five, Okay, this is completely customizable. You are going to make the tail as long as you like by just going around and around for six stitches until it wraps around as far as you'd like on your Pill Pal Pet. I like mine to go to about here or here, somewhere in there. You just keep making the tail, wrapping it around, seeing if it's long enough. And then I will tell you how long I make mine uh, when I'm done and if that's how long you want to make yours that's great or you can do it to you know any way you like um, and then I'll show you how to finish it off my tail is 10 rounds that's it's counting this one so 10 now I'm going to fasten off with a decent sized tail pull out my hook and I don't stuff the tail. You can, but I don't. The tail is very easy to sew to the body. First we have to close up the tail. So I'm just going to go around with my needle as if I was decreasing with my hook. And I should only have to do it three times because there's six stitches. Good, we can take out our stitch marker now. So after you have closed up the tail, now you have to decide where you want and what side you want your tail on. So place your little kitten on here and kind of flatten it a little bit and bring your tail around. Mine's gonna go on this side and you can use your pins if you want to, but I'm just gonna go straight for it and I'm gonna hold my little kitten down, bring my tail around so that it's touching the ground, and then go into the body and out the other side. Now you can go back the other way and through the tail. And that way when you put it there, the tail's on the ground. So it's not just hanging up in the air. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> there we go. Just go in and out a few times. Doesn't matter how many. You just want to make sure that your tail is secure. And then I'm going to go out somewhere in the back. Just weave it in and out a few times. Make sure it doesn't come undone. If you're going to give this to a small child, please make sure you go in and out more times than necessary, just so it's very secure, and then fasten off. Now let's make our ears, very quickly. Chain three. One, two, three. In the second chain from the hook, make a single crochet. In the third, make a half double crochet. And fasten off. You can always shape them if you want them pointier. 
but that's it. That's what I use for my ears. So using my body here, finding the top of my head, I am going to place my ears right behind row five, round five. And just place them how you think your kitty's ears should be. Mine will be about three stitches apart on the top of the head. And they go about over two stitches. Gonna temporarily leave that right there. Add the next ear. Make them about three stitches apart, but of course it's completely customizable for you. I'm just tying a little knot. And then I'm gonna hide the tails inside the body. If you are giving this to a small child, please attach the ears um, a little more securely than I do. I would add a middle stitch probably to hold the middle of the ear to the head. But mine's just sitting on a shelf, so um, I'm not worried about anything happening to it. Here is my cat. So far it has no face. <laughs> we can fix that. I've got some black yarn here and a little bit of peach yarn. I think the peach would be really cute with this particular yarn for the nose, but first I'm gonna make the eyes. We're gonna do the false French knot. If you don't know, I'm kind of famous for this <laughs> on this channel. I love the false French knot. It's super fun and super easy. And one of the best ways to get the French knot look when you can't embroider a French knot. So. Take a small piece of yarn, act as if you're going to tie these two together, so cross them like this. Wrap one side around this piece three times, two, three. Wrap the other side the same, one, two, three. Slowly pull until you get a knot. Push on both sides so you get a more round version. And then one more knot right over it. Make sure it goes right over it. Ta-da! Now make two. They are roughly the same size. I am going to put mine in row one, two, three, right behind row three, kind of diagonally to the ears. So how to install a false French knot is really easy. You take one side of the knot, thread it through your needle, pull. If you accidentally pull the knot into the head, it's okay. It's really easy to fish it out with your needle. Now I'm going to pick a stitch that's really close to where I went in, but it can't be the exact same hole. So I'm gonna pick like right here. I mean, really close, but but not. You don't want it to look like it's a knot. You want it to look like a safety eye. So I'm gonna pull just a little bit to kind of indent it just for fun. You don't have to indent it. I'm just doing it because I can. I'm gonna tie a little knot here. Isn't that cute? See, it brought the face in a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing for this eye, still on the same line here, but I think my eye's gonna go more right there.
Again, pick a stitch that's near it, but not the same stitch. Make sure you go out the same place you came in, right there. Pull down. And you can adjust them if you want, like that. See? Perfectly safe for children, because it's just yarn. It's not a plastic piece that they can accidentally swallow. It's really good. Also, if you are gonna give this to a child, three knots, please. <laughs> Now all that's missing is its nose. And of course, if you wanna add whiskers and anything else, go ahead. Now I will be completely honest with you. I am not the best at noses, but I do try. <laughs> I'm sure yours will look way better, but I just like to make mine around the magic ring. So the magic ring is here. That is where I put my nose. And I just make a little V. And a little more that way. There we go. Yep, that's all I do. And then, of course, you could always bring this one down, which is what I do for my bunnies. But um, I'm not going to do anything more. I'm really worried to ruin it, to be quite honest. I am terrible at embroidery, so... I need to practice that, I know. <laughs> but that's why some of you like my patterns because they're just real simple and there's nothing too fancy. And I get it, believe me. Quick and simple. Well, simple with just enough detail. How about that? And there you go. Pill Pal Pet Cat. Really easy, really quick, and shouldn't be difficult. But if it is, you can always leave me a comment down below. If anything was tricky, let me know. Okay, so I hope you had fun today making cobweb with me. And if you made cobweb, cinder, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me know. Please, please tag me on Instagram. Don't forget about our Facebook group. Always link down below. You can post in there or you can just email me. Just email me pictures and maybe I'll show them on here. I hope you had fun making little cobweb and um, I can't wait to see yours. <laughs> cobweb is also the perfect size for Halloween buckets, Christmas stockings, Christmas ornaments, or just sitting on your desk and looking adorable which is what she will do for me. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun, please like, share, and subscribe to the Yarn Zebra family. I would love to have you. And remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Goodbye.